Hello Internet, this is Mark McKay and I am going to talk about Perspective and Photoshop. Uh, I've been learning Perspective over the last couple of months and I've also been uh, learning how to draw in Photoshop too and I decided to put the two of them together. Now unfortunately Photoshop does not come with a lot of Perspective tools so I decided to write a script uh, to uh, do a lot of that on my own so that it's uh, you have this nice set of nicely measured lines that make it a whole lot easier to draw perspective stuff in Photoshop. And I'm going to demonstrate that plugin. Now um, I'm going to post a link in my uh, website that um, where you can download the script so you can use it in your own programs. Uh, it's under the uh, PSD license so it's free to use. But let's start off by creating a new document and we're going to start off simple. We're just going to create a simple one point perspective uh, scene. So there's a new document, and what we want to do now is start building perspective grids. So um, before I started this, I copied the um, script file. It's called, let me bring it over here for you. And uh, there it is, uh, perspectivegrids.jsx. If you download that and you copy it into your Photoshop um, uh, scripts directory, uh, then whenever you start Photoshop, you'll have this additional menu option. Go under File, Scripts, and uh, Perspective Grids. When you click that, it will open up this new dialog box, and uh, there you have all the different uh, types of uh, perspective grids you can create. And because you're going with one point perspective, uh, I'm going to start off by creating a vanishing point. Vanishing point is the point that oh, that everything you're looking at vanishes towards. This is a point on the horizon that all the lines seem to converge towards. So, um, actually I'm going to cancel that for a second, go over to the paths menu so that you can see the paths because what we're going to do is create a path. And once more, go to File, Scripts, Perspective Grids, uh, bring that over. And um, this is T telling us what uh, the image we're creating, uh, what, what the grid that we're creating looks like. Let's just go with the defaults and click OK. And you see it created this uh, ring of parallel lines in the, I mean, of uh, circular radial lines in the middle. If we zoom in, just pressing Control plus there, you can see this point in the middle, that is the vanishing point. That is what everything in our drawing is converging towards. And you can see we have these extra lines out here. These are still converging towards the vanishing point. They're just a little bit more spaced out uh, because as you get further away from the vanishing point, these lines get further. These lines get further apart. Uh, as you get further apart, it's useful to add more lines so that you can still see the perspective even though you're far away from the vanishing point. Now I'm going to zoom out some more. See uh, this set of lines is really small in the middle of our picture. So what we're going to do is uh, expand that a little. I'm going to press Control T to um, allow us to um, scale and uh, move those paths. And I'm going to hold Shift and uh, click and drag on the corner here, so we have a nice smooth scale. And we're just going to drag. Okay. Sorry, I just got a little lag there. Okay, and just drag that up so we have nice coverage uh, of our drawing. And let's move that vanishing point a little bit off the center. Um, and maybe scale that up a little bit more. So there we have a nice nice set of vanishing points completely covering our uh, picture. And I'm going to press enter to just confirm that. And so we now have the pads set up in a good format to cover everything. Now we want to do, what we would like to do next is stroke that so we can actually see the vanishing points on our canvas. So I'm going to click uh, a new layer to create a new layer and I'm going to select the color blue uh, which is the color we're going to stroke the paths with and I'm going to click OK I'm going to zoom in a little bit by pressing Control Plus and alright that looks good so um, we're going to go, over, go back to the paths again sorry got some lag here and I'm going to right click go down the stroke path and I'm going to press OK and we're going to now, and that is just stroke the pads and you can see that it stroked it I'm going to click there with these uh, very thick blue lines maybe that's a little bit too thick maybe we should try that again with thinner lines 
So I'm going to press Control uh, Z to undo that. I'm going to click B for brush. I'm going to select a brush size. Let's go with one pixel because these need to be really thin diaphanous lines. So now I'm going to go right back to Perspective Parallel Lines. Go down and Stroke Path. Click OK. And all right, now it's been stroked. Going to click in there. There you can see we uh, just covered that layer with uh, lots of thin blue lines here. Go back to layers. There it, yeah, we all put them all on that little layer there. So let's uh, call that our vanishing point layer. Okay, and this is this is a good foundation to start with because already we have all those nice lines are zooming towards the vanishing point right there in the middle. But that's not enough. If you want to do one point perspective, you also need to have horizontal uh, lines going across the middle and also vertical lines going up and down so that you can set your other guideposts. So let's create another layer that we're going to put those lines on. Go back to our pads. And let's go to File, uh, Scripts, um, Perspective Grids, that over. Now we're going to create parallel lines this time. And let's create 100 of those and press OK. Now that just created a whole bunch of dense parallel lines right in the middle of canvas there. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, scale those so that they, uh, we have nice coverage. Now uh, one of the odd things about Photoshop is that if you press Ctrl T to do that, you get this error message because Photoshop does not like you to transform things that transform pads that don't have loops in them. So just to get around that error, what we're going to do is select the uh, rectangle tool and make sure that's in path mode. We're just going to put a little box just around it. This is just to help scale things. And now if we press Ctrl T, now it works. So uh, what we're just going to do is uh, zoom out, Ctrl minus. So you're going to press shift and drag just to create a nice coverage of uh, more lag here. There we go. Okay, just uh, drag that up so that the coverage is just about right. Come on. Sorry, sorry about all this lag. Not sure what's going on. Anyhow, that looks about right, so I'm going to press uh, Enter to uh, select that. Come on. Pressing Enter. Yeah, uh, this didn't happen on my previous run. I'm not sure why Photoshop is so laggy. Enter to confirm. Okay, so now if we zoom in again, uh, so that, that looks like nicely spaced part parallel lines. So because these lines are running horizontal, horizontal corresponds to X. I like to use the color red for X. We're going to make those red lines. So if we go back to our layers. Okay, go back to paths. Gonna Right click on parallel lines, stroke path, and we then click away. You can see we now have a whole bunch of red lines that were drawn across. And go over to our layers. And yeah, we can call those uh, horizontal. Okay, now in order to finish this up, we also need some vertical lines, so we're going to create a new layer for that. Go back to paths, going to zoom out, select parallel lines, now uh, zoom out even more, and press Ctrl T so that we can uh, modify those lines. Pressing Ctrl T again. Okay, no, oh, I pressed just regular T. Uh, let's undo that, I accidentally started the text tool. Select, can click on parallel lines, control T, there, uh, shift, so that we can drag by increments. Gonna click and drag on the corner here and rotate that around. There we go. Yeah, you have to show Photoshop who's boss sometimes. Okay, zoom back in. This time, because it's vertical, vertical is like the y-axis, I like to use green for the y-axis, so we can choose a green color. Click OK. Make sure, OK, that layer is selected. Going to right click. Going to stroke path. Brush. OK. And there, now 
you can see we just created some green lines here. And if we go back to our layers, you can see let's just clear the vanishing point there. Got a nice grid here, green lines for verticals, red for horizontal, and we got some blue vanishing points there. Let's call that uh, vertical grid lines. Okay, and this is your basic one point perspective grid. Now, uh, one more thing, we're just going to put those into a group, call them the perspective lines. Alright, and maybe we can uh, fade those out a little bit so that they don't get, don't interfere with our drawing. So at this point, we have a nice one point perspective grid we can draw on top of. So let's just uh, finish up by creating a quick, quick drawing. I'm going to uh, use the color black. I'm going to uh, put our brush back up to uh, 5 pixels. And there you go. And so there's our vanishing point in the middle there. So we're just going to draw on top of that. And just follow the green lines to create some uh, verticals. If you want to go into the distance, follow the blue lines. Follow a green line again to drop a vertical down. Blue line for distance. If you want to go across, you can follow the red lines. Actually, I like that line, so let's... Come on. At this point, you're just having fun. You're just uh, putting on windows, just architectural features. You can let your imagination have fun uh, because you have those nice little lines in the background that are uh, guiding you and making sure that everything goes in the right place. And uh, just trying to pan here. Yeah, I'm I'm using a web back. Ah, Anyhow, we can put like a tree down there. Maybe uh, a little sidewalk. Oh. All of those blue perspective lines there. Go across like that. Maybe something on the other side. You can continue our street. Oh, come on, come on, Photoshop. There you go. Now, th th this is not the plugin uh, that's doing this. This is my uh, web uh, recording software, I think. I'm not sure why it's doing this. But anyway, there we go. We can uh, build a little house over there. A little one point perspective house. Just keep on going like that. So uh, that that is one point perspective uh, using uh, the grids. I'm gonna upload some other videos that show um, uh, some of the more advanced grids, but uh, this should be a good sort of introduction, overall tutorial for it. So uh, thanks for watching.